In this video, we'll go over all you need to know about communication. What's going on guys, it's your host Sergeant Frost and welcome back to another episode of noob to pro Today is episode 6 and we'll be talking about communication. Communication is a crucial part of Valorant and it's also something that becomes increasingly important as you continue to climb the ranks and become a better Valorant player. To go about communication in the right way, we'll first cover some key concepts that are fundamental to having a solid communication skill set. Then we'll mention some bad habits you should avoid and we'll be ending it with some more advanced things that build upon the fundamentals and can make a very big difference in your game. So without further ado, let's just get into it. So, of course, the absolute basics of communication is that when you see, hear, or read something that's useful for you or the rest of your team to know, you let them know through voice communication. This helps your team work together better, and even individual players will have an easier time in their decision making because they receive better information. But of course, there's a lot of things that should be considered when communicating, so... First, let's get some key concepts right. One of the most important concepts in communication is urgency. Using proper urgency and tone allows you to say a lot more with fewer or the same amount of words. There's a big difference between saying 2B and 2 at B. Having a chill and relaxed tone makes a lot of sense when you're giving information that doesn't require an immediate response. You spotted enemies close to their spawn and no one in your team needs to react to that information right away. But calmly saying, there's one close behind you, even though it may be accurate, is not going to come across as urgent if you don't use the proper tone. One flank, watch out, does that job much better. Think about how you're calming and try prioritizing urgency through your tone. If something requires a teammate to do something right now or else they die or immediately lose the round, using some urgency in your voice is exactly right. If the last enemy is hit for 40 and was seen mid about 20 seconds ago, saying a calm, last hit 40 was mid, or even just last hit 40 makes more sense. Then there's also the importance of saying numbers. If you spot three enemies peeking top mid on ascent, you call three top mid. But if you hear at least two fellas stomping in main, but honestly it sounds more like four, you say four main. No, no of course you don't. If you hear two but think it's more, you say at least two main. And if you see five people rushing a site, you say five A, not all A. Because all A nine out of 10 times means three A. At least that's the precedent set and ranked. Make sure to always give accurate numbers. When you think it's more, make that clear by saying something like at least or maybe more. If you're not sure, always name a lower amount. Make sure to build trust with your teammates and have them convinced by round five that the info you give is reliable. When in doubt, always give the lower end of your guess. Also, there's an important aspect of looking into context and giving all comms that are relevant in the moment, and leaving out things that aren't. When your teammate is in a 1v1, a super good comm is that their breach doesn't have any flashes anymore. By giving that piece of info, your teammates know he's either playing for a stun, or he's going to try and catch him with a good peek. Similarly, when you're about to win a round in a 3v1 against a Sage, it might be worth mentioning that she's one orb off of a res. If your teammate overpeaks and dies, the round is suddenly a 2v2, and if Sage is near an orb, she might want to go grab one and turn it into a 3v2. In this scenario, that piece of information allows everyone on your team to have a better idea of how the round will likely play out, and what the enemy Sage has as her options. But if that comm is not immediately relevant and does substantially change the way a round is going to play out, making that comm is just a flood of unnecessary information that can even have negative effects like blocking footsteps, and try to make any relevant comms. Now before we move on to some more fundamentals as well as bad habits, I should quickly let you know we also have a website. Over on ProGuides.com, there's high level guides made by the best pros in the scene. There's boot camps, and we even offer coaching from Immortal and Radiant level players. Everything's available for just $8 a month, so if you're serious about ranking up, check it out today. Now back to communication. It's super important to make sure that when you make comms, it's clear whether you're guessing or you are having a read versus when you're actually knowing something and can confidently say it. If you're the A player and the enemies are faking your bomb site, it'll be natural to say something like Steps A or Drone A. Maybe you even call what you think it's A, but you're also the first player to see when it's a fake or when it kind of seems like a fake, so you should be communicating that. If you spot some early utility but then no one comes out, saying something like, I think it's a fake, can make your team fall back in time to stop the real hit. But of course, you don't know if it's a fake or at least not with certainty. Your enemies could be doing a re-hit where they basically fake a fake. Whether you think that's the case or not is gonna come down to your read. Maybe the enemy started running back but stopped stepping around suspiciously early, making you believe that they faked the footsteps. If you truly believe that they're going to re-hit, you should let your team know so they can prepare themselves. I think they're gonna re-hit A, but that think word is really important. When you say that, your team knows that you don't immediately hear five people running at you, but more so that you make an educated guess based on that information you already have. For some reason, it's also important to differentiate between A, 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 it's A, it's A, and I think it's A, can someone help? 
The first one means that there's probably all five rushing you down, and they are going to have the bomb sight in at least the next 10 seconds. The latter means you heard a lot of steps, and the enemies are starting to use their utility, making you think it'll probably be A. On Haven, for example, you could be playing B as Sage and hear three people step around A lobby. This is a good enough reason to wall mid, call that you think it might be A, and start to rotate. But it absolutely doesn't warrant, it's A, it's A, where everyone, including your C player, makes their way to A site as fast as their legs can carry them. Similarly to the first thing we talked about, make sure to express all these things with proper tone. If you think it's probably A, that should be roughly medium urgency. If it's definitely A, it's high urgency. And if you just hear some steps A lobby, then you comment with little to no urgency. Those are things you definitely need to nail and are absolutely fundamentals of communication. But there's also some more advanced things we'll go over in a moment and some bad habits that you should definitely look to avoid. One of those things, one of the biggest bad habits people tend to fall into is backseat gaming or constantly telling your teammates how to play, especially during clutches. It's generally a better idea to focus on yourself and what yourself can do to improve the chances of winning the game, rather than what your team is doing wrong. But even if that wasn't the case, backseating would still be a bad idea most of the time. An important thing to consider is that every Valorant player has a different skill set, especially since there's so many agents and each of them have different mechanics. You might like to plant the bomb for spawn and play from there, but for your omen, it might be a better idea to plan a default and play a one-way on spike. You don't know what your teammate's plan is, and what works best around the skill set they've developed. What works for you might not work for them. So even if your teammate isn't getting confused from both trying to clutch and listening to your step-by-step -step instructions, it could very still well be better to just let them play their clutch. I get it, watching your teammates fumble an easy clutch is painful to say the least, but bombarding them with instructions and forcing them to do something they might not be comfortable doing is only going to make them worse. So just shut up when you yourself are not in the clutch. The only exception to that rule is when your clutching teammate very apparently seems to be missing some crucial information that you do know of. Maybe they didn't hear the last guy step in garage and are instead watching flank. Then giving a short comm like, he stepped garage, makes sense. Leave it at that though, don't tell him when and how to peek. Don't tell them whether you think the enemy is sticking it or faking it. Let them cook. Only give them crucial information that you think they may have missed. Another bad habit and one that's quite common even among better players is whining and complaining. Your teammates don't really need to know the, oh my god, I whiffed. Man, ugh, that sucks, dude. He's hit 40, though. Only that last part of communication is relevant. Not only does whining clog up comms unnecessarily, so that your teammates are unable to hear important things like steps or abilities being used, but it also slows down important communication coming through, like that he's hit 40 piece. If your teammate is close by, they could very well capitalize off that by jump right-clicking them with the classic. But if you first whine for five seconds, then that kind of crosses out that option. Plus, on top of that, whining is just really annoying to listen to. Maybe if you have a duo and you're both dead, you can complain about it in Discord. But don't force your random teammates to listen to your cries. Honestly, no one cares. And lastly, a bit of an obvious one, but one that should be mentioned regardless of that is tilting. Tilting and toxicity is awful communication-wise. It has zero positives and a ton of negatives. It'll make your team play worse, it makes future good comms significantly more unlikely, and it completely ruins the vibe of any game. No one genuinely likes playing in a toxic environment. Start with the toxicity and soon enough you'll be basically having everyone thinking they just want out, no matter the result. I don't think there's a worse habit you can get into than tilting on the mic. Internalize your emotions and don't scream them out to your teammates. No one appreciates that. If you think we missed any talking points or have an experience to share that this reminded you of, make sure to comment down below. But now for some more advanced tips, each of which are extremely helpful if you want to master the skill of communication. First of all, whenever you request a gun, make sure you state the name of the agent of the person you want to drop. Check for whoever has the most money and ask them to drop you. Doing it this way instead of just saying can someone drop will make sure your team manages their economy better and also gives you a better chance of the right person actually responding. Hearing your name or agent triggers a person a lot more to listen than just for someone, so it's a good habit to get into. Another good thing is stating your team's utility before you go in for a retake, especially if you yourself have impactful utility. Yo guys, I got a drone. Let me drone spawn first. Hey, I have a Killjoy ult. Wait for retake. Stuff like that can really make a difference. But also, if you're playing Omen or even Jet, you can do the same. Sova, can you dart? Then I'll smoke dash in. Or I got two smokes left. I'll smoke long and short. When you call out you and your teammates utility, a retake can be easily set up and everyone on the team will have a much better idea of what it will look like. Also, when your team is looking for the last enemy or last couple enemies and you've noticed some tendencies in their game, it might be worth communicating. Chamber likes to flank or Omen usually plays A. These type of comms are clearly communicated as educated guesses and can be helpful when structuring your play without being back seedy or giving out comms you aren't sure are true. Definitely don't overdo this, but if you notice no one holding flank and Chamber already did that four times during the half, then it might be a good way to help your team out. 
We already touched on this a bit, but in some cases it's also really good practice to count smokes or utility. Silva's drone is a super powerful ability. It sometimes even dictates where you and your teammates can play, since sitting in an off angle can be easily punished with a good drone. Similarly, Brimstone only has 3 smokes, so if he's already wasted 2, telling your teammates that will help them recognize that they won't be able to smoke all the angles on an upcoming sight hit. And lastly, there's also fun comms. Comms that aren't giving important info or telling your team important strats, but rather just some funny stuff, or some uplifting comms that lighten the mood and set up a fun atmosphere in the process. At the end of the day, we're playing a game, and enjoying the time you spend on it should be a goal in and of itself. Some of the top streamers like Tarek showcase this really well. Most, if not all of his games, he can be seen constantly making jokes and raising the environment he's in. He's a fun person, and he's enjoyable to play with, and that absolutely brings value to a team. It's not uncommon to see in professional teams that there's rules set around making sure everyone is having fun. Tilting and toxicity is obviously a big no-no, but seeing the opposite where making sure the vibes are strong as a priority is really interesting. When everyone is having fun, people play better. Part of that is circular, of course. When you're winning, you're more likely to enjoy your time, but it works in both ways. When you and your teammates are having fun and are just enjoying the game, it's easier to ask for a Sova drone or a breach flash as well, and they're going to be much more willing to help you. Good vibes works well in more ways than one. If you're a fun teammate, people around you are going to play better, and you'll enjoy the time you spend playing so much more. It feels weird telling people that being friendly and having a sense of humor is an integral part of Valorant, but honestly, it quite does help. Enjoy your time playing, and you'll also see your win rate rise. Alright, that's going to wrap up the guide. If we missed anything, or you just want to have something to share, make sure to leave a comment down below. We try to reply to all of them and appreciate all the love. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, and this has been your host, Sergeant Frost. I'll see you all in the next one.